uh, lemon ends are actually quite good. Okay. Ends. Yeah. Which you are licking and they taste exactly like lemon. When you see huge caiman fighting with huge anaconda, it's like atomic bombs falling into the water. <laughs> really scary. Really got into the mosquito net, zipped like this, zzz, lightning, and the black jaguar was looking at me like that distance. We would like to thank everybody who supports this podcast. So we're back on the podcast again. How are you? Uh, good morning. Perfect. Great. Nice. Good morning. Shit happens. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to what you tell me today. And I thought, because today in the morning, I watching your social media videos you sending over to me from your last or your recent trip to the Amazon. You're like you come back two days now. And I would like to talk about or what, how maybe people can understand the size of this area and Maybe yeah. explain it a little bit. The size is absolutely insane. Just try to imagine that it's forest, which is actually bigger than whole Europe. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> so it's not a classic forest where you go for picking mushrooms <laughs> here behind your house. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's vast area, huge uh, huge place. Still bigger than whole Europe. It's changing because there is uh, a lot of pressure on the Amazon rainforest. I have spent there my last uh, nearly 22 years. And from these 22 years, I mean, in time, I spent there four and a half years in, in total. So it's, uh, I call Amazon my second home because w once you are there, that's what you know, what's, that's what you need to know about Amazon. You love it or you completely hate it. Nothing in the middle. I know that because I took there some of my friends and it was exactly like this. They loved it or completely hated it. And many times they hated it during the trip and they loved it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then they want to come back again. Yeah. Uh, really depends where you can go, uh, where you go to the Amazon. Uh, you have uh, primary forest, secondary forest. You have places where you have uh, a lot of water and the forest, uh, the jungle looks completely different than in uh, other places, the primary forest. Even in the middle of the day, you, 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 have, you, you have a feeling it's like late afternoon because there is not much light. Okay. And uh, everything is green. People might think that, that they will see there a lot of colors, which might be right if if you if you look some animals and flowers but in general everything is green so when 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 people ask you uh how are the colors and you say everything is green but there are so many different green colors it, it's incredible and uh it's not easy place for your psychics because you are very far from civilization if you want to see the, the beautiful, amazing places. And uh, you're very far from help, from hospitals. So you need to really respect nature. You can't be doing stupid things, or you can, but then you are putting yourself and people around you into risk. And uh, the respect there is uh, very essential. And as well, What's essential is the friendship over there. If you go there with someone, you need to be pretty sure that uh, it's a good partner for for such a trip. Okay, yeah, I, I think like if you have like a a guy who's like or people who are like really dumb or doing like fast decisions without really thinking about it, it could be really dangerous. To be honest, like um, is there a situation what? already happened in your trips recently to which is an example which you definitely not do like 
Yeah, uh, the best example is don't touch anything what you really don't know. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but then you, basically you can't touch nothing because you don't know, you, you, that you have no clue what, what is there, you know, yeah. all these animals and herbs and trees and everything around you. You need to be really experienced in the jungle because ev even now on, 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 on my trip, guys caught a frog, you know, the frog is big like this, you know, really... We call it small dog. Yeah. It. Uh, I, I even send you a video of of that frog, but that frog was quite big, but it was a baby kind of. You know, these okay. these frogs can get really massive, <laughs> kind of like a small dog. And uh, they caught it, and uh, after uh, some time, they said, "Ah, oh, my 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 hands are hurting." You know, I said, "Of course, because you know they have uh, kind of toxic liquid on their body." But you are lucky because there are other frogs in the jungle where when you could be already dead. No. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then we had we had spear frog. That's the frog w which you use for curare mm. uh, for the poison. Uh, Indians use it to to the, like the poison for hunting the animals, and guys had this frog only like uh, forty centimeters from from their tent, you know. So there are a lot of animals which are poisonous, are toxic, uh, but they don't want to harm you unless you want to harm them or if you do something stupid like a ah, beautiful frog uh, <laughs> let's let's watch it let's kiss it you know maybe it uh, it will become a nice prince yeah <laughs> so. okay okay i understand so like there is like a lot of stuff to know and um, but how is it for you going there uh, do you still see stuff where you think like what is this yes like, yes so many times so you are learning in the amazon all the time only beetles you have like 280,000 species no it's a few <laughs> uh, even fish you have three and a half thousand species discovered fish uh with names but uh, sometimes i see fish in the water most of them small ones i have no clue what type of fish it is Crazy. so because amazon rainforest is changing a lot if you are on one spot you have fauna and flora uh, and you, you get used to it, then you go like 500 kilometers and it changed completely as well. And you are missing some of the species which you had before and uh, opposite you have some extra species which, which you don't know from the previous place. So it's always changing depending on, on the forest and depending on the water. In Amazon you have two types of waters, you have uh, the white water and black waters. White water are coming from Andes and the water has really like um, coffee color and uh, that's created by the, by the ground, by the soil. And then you have the black waters, there you have um, a lot of iron in the water and it's really black. Uh, it, it doesn't look uh, clean, but honestly it's cleaner than the white waters. The visibility is better, depends on the sun because it's really like black black. and. Um, these black waters are super rich for life. Okay. In these waters, you have all these super beautiful aquarium fish, and you have there a lot of caimans and uh, anacondas and arapaimas and payaras and. Okay, crazy. Like, I, I would, I would really like to talk about one more about like the animals and the species and all this kind of stuff. But first, one big thing is. You was not able to go there the last two or three years, right? Yeah, it was impossible. So because of COVID, yeah. This was the first trip. This was the first trip after three years. I thought maybe they changed a lot of stuff after such a long time like this. How was it? Was it changed or was it like the same? Or what was your expectation? Like your what you think before you go and what happens? I was scared, honestly, yeah. because always when I'm getting back to the Amazon, I'm scared that something probably might change uh, something might be destroyed you know again 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 because it's happening all the time and uh, I was scared that these three years might be uh, uh, might be used for some bad stuff you know because w when you don't get a tourism when you don't uh, have any control uh, bad people are using these times to to do their job uh, I was happy because that area haven't changed no much destruction but i can see the destruction everywhere around you know they are 
they are taking now, I would say between 15, 20 uh, um, soccer fields per hour from the Amazon. So that's this giving Quite you a lot. kind of yeah. idea how fast is the destruction. And every year we are losing many, many species forever, which we even don't know. And it's very important that many of these species, which we know, uh, we are using for our medicine, you know, a lot. We are using a lot of stuff from the Amazon for our medicine. For, really? for yeah, for 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 drugs, we are using uh, on daily basis our civilization, and uh, probably way more we are losing every year without a possibility of discovering what for we can use it. So you never know if last month, for example, we haven't lost uh, uh, the most important herb for cancer or you know for other diseases. Because we don't know. Because we don't know, because we are losing these beautiful things faster than we can discover them. And uh, Amazon, uh, I really don't understand how stupid we are, honestly. Because if there is the most important place. place in this whole world, is the Amazon rainforest. You have there every single answer for our questions. It's only that we need more time to discover it. We are trying to discover universe, but we have universe here on planet Earth, which is called Amazon rainforest. And still we know so little about it and we are losing it so fast. This is really sad. To be honest, this sounds really sad. Yeah, it's true. So, you know, believe because me, in the beginning of, of, my, of my 20s, I've been flying over like huge portion of forests, which doesn't exist anymore these days. You, you fly and under you is nothing. What, what is there like? Uh, cities, uh, palm trees, nothing. Uh, petroleum companies uh, just destroyed. Okay. Just the civilization is eating the jungle more and more and we need and more and more. And of course, huge places for cows as well, for farming, you know. So uh, it's quite sad w when you see um, that in only 20 years, how many places I, I could see yeah, but have it's been truth. destroyed. It's true. That's really warning. And I, I, I'm not sure, but in 40, 45 years, we lost nearly 50% of the Amazon, Amazon in territory. That's a lot. If it's get in the future. No, no. We already, what, yeah, what's there now? Nearly like 40, 45 years, let's say 50 years, we lost nearly 50% of the jungle. And it gets faster and faster. Yes, it gets faster and faster because we have better and better technologies for uh, the destruction and we need more and more because we are more and more. So we need more. What you are, maybe maybe that's more a question for the end, but it, it's right in the topic now. So what would you are wish for the Amazon personnel? Uh, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> that would, uh, it's impossible. I would wish that people leave it alone like completely alone and uh, Amazon should be completely protected, like completely protected. Yeah. If there is a place which must be protected is the Amazon rainforest. And I, I do believe, you know, it's, and now I might probably sound crazy, but a few years ago, uh, I, I oh, had a talk Amazon. with people from, from government, from Czech Republic, and uh, I told them, you are making huge investments every year into projects all over Czech Republic. Tell me, what is 100 million Czech crowns in the budget of Czech Republic? It's kind of nothing, no? They said, yeah, it's uh, a lot of money, but in the budget is actually not much. So for you and me, it's like when we, let's say, buy a few bread, yeah? Or nothing super big. Uh, and I asked them, why Czech Republic don't take this money and why we don't buy a piece of Amazonian rainforest? 
not only to protect it, because I know that that's not what you like, but you can make there as well business. But, bi but business which won't be destroying the, the forest anymore. You can do, you can have a huge territory and on one part you can do ecotourism and the rest you can keep for Czech scientists. Then you will you would put a map on Czech Rep of Czech Republic, uh, or I mean you would put Czech Republic on a map of like global scale. The Czech Republic would have such an incredible project, like saving Amazon rainforests, giving 100 million Czech crowns every year and buying more and more land. Maybe then other countries would would join, and suddenly four, five, ten countries would join, and suddenly you would be able to protect a huge part of, of the Amazon rainforest. And that was in the time when uh, there was a, a big question how to protect water in Czech Republic. But I, I think until today they really didn't get it. Because if you want to protect water, for example in Czech Republic, you, you, you can't solve the problem in Czech because we get the water here from the sky. No, it's, but the water is actually creating in the Amazon in rainforest. Because you have around 60% of all drinking water comes from the Amazon in rainforest. So 60% of my lake here, 60% of bottle of water, which you buy at gasoline station, 60% of your swimming pool, 60% of the, the, the bath you take, and 60% of you because you are created by water. So the water doesn't come from Czech Republic or from Germany. You know, our forests are very tiny, tiny, but all the water comes from Amazon in rainforest. So that's the place where we need to start protect the water. If only we talk about the water, you know, because uh, at school, they teach you it's very important for what, what what we breathe, but it's as well super important what we drink. And what we are doing right now with Amazon in rainforest, it's like exactly like you're sitting 30 meters above the ground on a huge part of tree, you know, huge branch. And you are looking around and you are saying, oh, it's so beautiful. This place is insane beautiful. I love it. You're holding yourself with one hand because you don't want to fall. You don't want to die, no, when you're sitting so high. Yeah. But with second hand, you're holding a chain and you are cutting the branch under you. This is exactly what we are doing now. We know that Amazon in rainforest, it's vital for our civilization, for water and for, for oxygen. And still we are destroying it. So how stupid we are. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, it's like you don't kill yourself immediately. You know, it's not as fast as if you would hit the wall with a car, but it's the same. Yeah. But unfortunately, not for us, but for our kids, that's uh, not a good future. Do you have still? Uh, do you still hope that Czech Republic, for example, will make something like this? Uh, we are a very small nation, you know, so, uh, so. Or in general, that countries will buy parts of the Amazon to protect them or to use them in the right way or to, you know, there are a lot of things to do which are better than now. I hope so. I just believe that all crazy people like me and, uh, you know, the scientists, they are not, not uh, presenting projects like this well because we always come to the rich people and to governments and say, uh, we are saying, let's save this world, uh, save this world, you know? But they don't give a shit, they want to have money, you know? Yeah. So I think maybe we should change the strategy. We should really come and say, hey, let's go and buy it. And let's make a business. And don't talk about saving, you know? And maybe we can we can buy that and uh, they will make the money with, uh, with um, uh, tourism, with uh, some researches, uh, with, some, um, with some medicaments as well, so they can make a big amount of money, but we preserve as well part of it for, for future and it won't be so bad like logging or uh, oiling or palm trees and... 
But in, in general, like, all these companies, these which are destroying the Amazon right now, they do it. Of course, it's to be honest, shit. But they do it for, for a us, reason. for they for you, for me, for all of our lives. We are part of it. That's the that's the saddest part, you know. And this is for me like the big question: Is it possible to stop it with our life right now, or is it more the thing that okay, if we want it, everyone, you know, like we can't buy any clothing, we can't go buy car because the oil or eat or whatever. Like I think it, I think it's possible, or at least there there should be a number, or there should there should be someone saying, "Okay, guys, we can't destroy more because then it's the end." Yeah, uh, there should be there should be limits for 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 everything, you know. And I don't think it's cutting wood is bad. Of course, I think it's quite the genius material because it's growing again. Yeah, for our life, because uh, but, we... Uh, we can't be taking too much. I think that's the problem. That taking out of nature is right. It's it's fine. But we need to be careful that we are not taking too much, because once you take too much, you destroy too much. And um, the, uh, the nature can't regenerate itself so fast then. And I think it's sort of a very good question, and it's it's difficult because we are too many people, and we are we are not living like our ancestors. You know, already my grandfathers they were living different life. They 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 used to work um, much more. They they used to uh, grow their food uh, themselves. Uh, their life uh, was slower. Our, our our civilization, like these days, we want to have everything now. You know, mm. you order something, and if you don't get it next day, you are kind of pissed off. Yeah. How is it possible that I don't have it still? You know, normally you you are used to have it now, now, not tomorrow. And tell us tell to someone that he needs to wait for something long time. But like because you tell me like you visit the first time that Amazon with twenty two, right? No, uh, I was 20. 20, okay. Between 20 and 21. So this is like 20 years ago. Yeah. So it's least... more, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, but so... I'm getting older. <laughs> over these days changed a lot in the forest and you yeah. see all this kind of stuff. And is there something you changed in your personal life because you see what's happening there? Like, for example, don't buy this or don't do this. Or was there something which is like, keeping in your mind because you can't do it anymore because you see the fault that happens. I've tried it. it. I've tried to change my life. And which kind of stuff was it? But you know what? I I rather talk about the bad things for me. You know, only that I go there, only that I fly there is wrong. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we can be talking about how bad it is that uh, the corporations are making so so much of destruction but in the end all of us are part of it so maybe one day they will uh, forbidden to fly so much maybe to use so many cars or what i hope for that we will start using technologies right that we will use our knowledge and our technologies to 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 use different um um like water, for example, you know, we should use more water. And I believe that is possible. And I even believe that the, the technologies are right here already, but uh, they are not free. You know? So I that's what I do hope that the, the scientists will come up with some uh, great innovations. Okay. Not only video games. <laughs> <laughs> it's good words. Okay. Um, after this, I would like to go back a bit to your recent trip in detail. So um, I watching the videos and I had one big question, like, of course, you cannot go to the airplane, go to the Amazon rainforest, get out of the plane and you're there. That's not the way how you're doing it. It's much, much more complicated to get there. And I think it's definitely depends on where you want to go. Like you say in the in the last time, like if you want to go like 300 kilometers or a thousand kilometers or however. Um, but yeah, how, how, what is the normal way to come into the Amazon? How does this works? What what is 
Very normal way. You you fly to Manaus, to Brazil. You take a tourist guide. They will pick you. They will pick you up at the airport. They will drive with you to the river. Uh, then you got on, on the boat, the local boat, and a few hours of boat ride, and uh, you you have uh, jungle everywhere around you. And you will be probably very happy. It will be amazing experience, but. Uh, amazing experience for someone who does know the Amazon rainforest because if he's someone who does Amazon rainforest you will see in these places the destruction quite everywhere around you and even the forest is without the animals of course you have one parrot here one monkey there but you won't see the miracles what Amazon normally offers you know or I wouldn't say not normally but rarely these days and for these miracles, you need to far, uh, travel very far because you can get into the places where animals don't know human beings. And that's the most beautiful, that you are having monkeys and other animals watching, like, what kind of species is that? And that's insane. That's that's what I love, you know, that you end up somewhere where is it so pristine and so untouched that... Uh, uh, even even the jungle is having uh, first human kind of uh, meeting, you know, Great. with you. Okay, okay, um, and okay. So now you're in the rainforest. You be there where you ever you want to go, and then you stay there for some weeks. How you live there? Like, what's about food, for example? Do you live right out the jungle, or do you bring a bit of stuff and? Just grab a little bit from the jungle. How does it work? You can't order a pizza, for example. No, you can't order pizza. That's for sure. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, you don't have Lidl there. You have nothing over there. And uh, both ways, normally we bring a little bit of food because we are having a little bit of food on the way as well. Uh, depends if is it like a trip with uh, some of my customers because I've been guiding as well in the Amazon. Then it's like more luxury trip when we have as well the freezer inside of the boat with the generator and some gasoline. So if we go for a short time, we can run for a few hours the generator and you have the you have the freezer when you have, for example, some clients. Because uh, but that's when you don't go very far. When I do my my own trips or my research trips is very very basic and. Um, I have, for example, some rice with me, which you can eat, but then we live out of the jungle because there is a lot, you know, it's only that you need to know what you can eat and what you can't eat. So the most important is knowledge, how to find food and how to find water, but it's everywhere around you. It's only about the knowledge. There are parts of the world where finding uh, food and water is difficult, but not in the Amazon. You have it everywhere around. But you need to know how to find it. Can you give some examples which kind of things you will eat there? Maybe, yeah, what is uh, the menu over there? Menu over there. So uh, you want to hear nice things or bad things? Both. 50-50. 50-50. So the water, you have a lot of options. You can drink uh, water from the river, but not very good. You might get some parasites. You can drink water from the streams from, from the jungle. Uh, it's better, but still you can get some parasites. So uh, better if you find the water in water wines, uh, lianas, mm. you know, but you need to be careful because some of these vines are toxic. So you might end up super bad and they look quite similar for you, for example, completely similar. So, and as well, you need to know how to cut them because you have this big line, uh, water, water vine, and you need to cut them not only down, so if you would cut and you would think, ah, and now the water will start dropping, doesn't happen. You need to cut the wine as well, like one meter above it. So the oxygen gets inside and in that moment you can get from a one, me one meter piece, let's say even a liter of water. Okay. It tastes shit, it tastes like a tree. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, no problem, and some of these uh, wines are as well antibiotics. Okay. 
So this is one of the possibilities for water. You have there other trees from which you can get the water. And about the food, um, it's uh, on, of course, you can take some filters and you can take some pills which you put in the water, but I don't take these because uh, I rather have the knowledge how to get the water and food from the jungle because all these pills and stuff like this, it's I don't think it's very good for your body. Before you come to the food, maybe one more detailed question. What was the best food? What is your favorite food out of the Amazon? What is maybe you sitting in the airplane going there? It's like, oh yeah, I can eat it one more time. Nice food. Uh, lemon ends are actually quite good. Okay. Ends. Yeah. Which you are licking and they taste exactly like lemon. Okay. And uh, boars, wild boars. Boars? Yeah. Pigs. Pigs. Wild, wild pigs from the jungle. How is it like a normal pig? No, no, it's like a wild boar from okay. from our jungle, only different shape, different size, much stronger, many more, and you hunt them with spear. Okay, that's that's uh, that's really super good quality meat. Okay, yeah, it sounds like. And what was the worst? Like, which uh, is the... probably monkeys. Monkeys again. <laughs> the monkeys. You know, it's uh, eating a monkey is. Uh, uh, horrible. It's like only the visual side. It's like eating a, a small kid, you know, honestly, it is horrible and they make it on the fire. So it doesn't look nice. And killing a monkey is even worse. And you, you, you need to have it in mind really clear what you are doing because when you see dying monkey it's like uh, again di dying human but uh, for local people and for the indians it's um it's like it's a different culture again you know it's we are eating here something and they then they are eating something and we can't be saying you are doing it wrong but uh, i remember uh my first kill of monkey Basically, when I lived with the Indians, uh, which is another story, but uh, I lived there, uh, the, the real Indians, you know, naked people living with no contact with civilization. I lived with them more than half a year. And uh, when I got there first time and I lived with them first weeks, I thought, okay, now I will fulfill my kids dreams and I will be here like Indiana Jones hunting with blow, blow gun and spear and and everything and I will learn everything about the jungle and I was I thought I am like uh, I'm like down to earth but I thought I wasn't and uh, during the weeks and months they were showing me and teaching me everything how to hunt how to create the blowpipe, how to make my spear, how to make arrows, how to make the poison curare, how to track animals, how to smell animals, how to see animals in the jungle, you know, using as well different type of like uh, herbs le w w w leaking into your eyes so your, your eyes get sharper, you know, and a lot of, a lot of really crazy stuff when I would tell you, you might think I'm crazy. And, um, but they never let me shoot on an animal. And I didn't understand why. They were teaching me so many things, but I was always like, I was, I went with them for a hunt and I said, yeah, but why they are showing me everything when I can't use it. And it, after like, something like four months probably one day we were in the in the jungle walking completely quiet they are completely naked yeah they have no shoes nothing and they they can handle it in such a difficult environment with uh, spikes there uh, spines everywhere around you so long they can go easily through your shoes and they are running there like you know like they would have armor plates around them and we were walking and suddenly one of the Indians looked at me, looked into the trees with no words 
and I saw there a, a monkey. And he looked at me very strange, never like that before. He took his blow gun, blow pipe, and gave it to me. And in that moment, I can tell you, I was shaking like a small kid. Even with all my knowledge, what they were showing me and teaching me, I knew that this is the moment for what they have trained me for long, so long. So I was super, super nervous and suddenly the target wasn't a tree or wasn't a, a leaf. Suddenly the target was living animal. And I it was my decision to, to take a life, you know, so I got really stressed by that, that on one side you, you need to kill beautiful animal and on the other side, if you miss, they will be hungry because it's their food, not only my food. So uh, the blowpipe is really long, it's 2.5 meters, sometimes 3 meters long, it's very heavy, not easy, you know, to, to hit it. And uh, you have uh, arrow inside with uh, uh, curare in the end. So you hit the monkey. Sometimes one arrow is enough. Sometimes you need two. And then the monkey is basically like f kind of falling asleep or, or on the branch until she, she lost the mind and fall down. And when the monkey falls down, that's the bad part because you really see how the life is like losing from, from the body. And I can tell you, I remember it like today, I was crying like a small baby. You know, even now I, I got goosebumps because you you see like a s small thing looking like a, like a human dying, you know. And it's so intense feeling in that moment. It's uh, undis I can't even describe it. And you, everything inside is you is like, was it good? Was it right? Did I do something bad? You know. And you took. I took a lot of lives before in in, in fishing. You know. But uh, suddenly it's it's different. You know you the. That's, I think, the first time, it was the first time in my life when I understood the value of life, when I killed that monkey. And then, of course, you take it to the camp and you eat everything. There is no waste, you know, not like in our civilization when you go shopping and you find something in the freezer which looks beautiful. But actually, many people kind of think that meat lives on the trees. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay, I buy it. It's beautiful. I like meat. Yeah, but I would never harm animal. That's wrong. Okay, uh, shoes from animal, a uh, bag from animal, s something else from animal. You know, but I would never harm an animal. What do you need to know about these people in the Amazon? Of course they kill, but they never take more than what they really need for their life. And I think that's the biggest difference between their culture and our culture, that we are taking everything what we want and they are taking only what they really need. Very big difference. So that was my memory uh, for, for the first kill and hunt. Uh, and um, it was very deep, it's still very deep inside of me. And uh, as I said, food is everywhere. It depends what you want. You can eat green, you know, a lot of green yes. around you. <laughs> but time to time, it's good to eat meat. I don't like monkeys, honestly. Mm. Not only because... Uh, can you describe the taste of the uh, Is Isn't there something you can... Yeah, look, you know. parrots and monkeys without salt, it's really, no, it's really not good. Okay. You know the aras? Aras? Yeah, the Ara, the biggest, the biggest Amazon parrots. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, yeah, parrots, yeah, yeah. which are like super expensive. Yeah, yeah. Try to imagine that the, the Indian goes to the forest and is bringing three hours dead on his back. Like, I don't know, 15,000 euro kind of, you know, like chickens. <laughs> yeah. you no? Know? Crazy. And they eat them, it's normal. Mm. Here you admire them, how beautiful they are and how expensive <laughs> they are. Okay, let's, let's 
hunt our chicken. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> One, two, three. But a different culture. Yeah, different culture. You know, you can tell them it's wrong. But out of the meat, uh, I've tried kind of everything. Uh, Cayman is really good. Cayman tastes like a chicken. Okay. And uh, the best meat for me is uh, wild boar. Okay. And this is like a, like a, like the taste of a pig over here? Or? No, no, completely different because they eat herbs. Oh, okay. So it's a very flavor, you know, you, you, you have the feeling you're eating uh, the best meat in the world because there is no, no chemism, there is no... Mm, 100% biological. Yeah, bio. That's what I would call bio, you know. <laughs> That's what I would call bio, bio. and... Um, but it's not uh, easy to to hunt them because you hunt them with a uh, spear mm. you make the spear you make your own weapon and then you need to track them they are super smart and they are making uh, big groups minimum 10 20 let's say but uh, i've seen groups of 300 400 boars okay and in uh, the jungle yeah 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 in the jungle you you f smell them you hear them, it's very intense uh, smell and uh, most intense is uh, boar, uh, jaguar and uh, anaconda. These three you can smell really, really good. And uh, the best hunt is yeah, if you are two, that's one, one guy is bio, kind of you know, going <laughs> okay. the opposite bio. side and is trying to push them to your direction. And you are standing there like 20, 30, 50, 100 boars are running exactly your direction, <laughs> like exactly your direction. And you have one spear. So you have kind of three options. You miss, you're safe and you are hungry. Uh, or you don't miss, you hit right and, and uh, you are safe yeah. and you are uh, not hungry. Your stomach will get full. Or you hit, you don't hit right, and uh, the boar with a spear inside of him is running exactly your direction. So you have these three options. Okay, okay. So <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. It, it's not easy. It's uh, but very fair play hunt. It's not like you're hunting with a gun and you're shooting animal on 200 meters that an animal have no clue you are there. Here you need to get really close, like 10 meters, you know, maximum, I would say. Closer better. Sometimes I'm spearing the boar on two meter distance and it's very risky as well. So it's it's fair play, fair game, real hunt where you are putting yourself into high risk because if you get bitten or hit by, by the boar, you can die there as well. And uh, again, we when we go hunting, we, we take one boar and we have food for a week. So again, we are not taking all what we want, only the minimum what we need. Okay, okay, okay. You, you, you say uh, anaconda. Do you ever eat anaconda? Is it possible to eat anaconda? I haven't tried anaconda. Uh, I wouldn't eat anaconda for me. It's really, I have deep respect against these animals, but uh, that's, that's the only animal which really you need to be afraid of in, in the jungle because I've met jaguars like super close like this. Never, never anything happened to me okay even the black jaguars uh but anaconda they are killing people you know it's not a stupid movie uh, they are killing people it's only they are not eating much you know the, the the really big anaconda which can not only kill people because four meter five meter anaconda has enough power to kill you it's easy but they can't swallow you they are too small for that but seven eight meter anaconda they have enough space to to swallow you they they are basically like a vampire so they suck the blood out of you and then they as well throw the rest of you outside you no know, if is it case of humans and uh these huge anacondas they don't eat very often and they are as well super rare you know uh there are very 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 few cases and most of them un unknown to public when uh, people were killed and eaten by anacondas, but it's happening. It's happening exactly in these places which are unknown and very far, but it's super rare because you need to know that they hunt mainly in the night. 
people in the Amazon in general, they don't go swimming at night. They don't go into the water at night. They know why they don't do it. Uh, but uh, some anacondas can attack as well in the daytime, no problem. And there are a lot of other animals which they prefer, which are full of blood as well. So that the human would get attacked, the chance is very small because the big anacondas most of the, the time live very far from civilization where are no people and where are no people there are a lot of other animals. So the the chance is super small, but it it does exist. Okay, but if I'm correct, you you not kill it, but you catch one. Uh, we caught many anacondas. You got many. Okay, like I I see one picture of you like as a young man sitting on the giant <laughs> snake like this. Like how? how why? Uh, this anaconda was supposed to be killed okay. by the Indians because the Indians really don't like them okay. because of their kids. So whenever they find a really big anaconda close to the village, they always kill it. And it's not easy. Uh, it's not difficult to kill it because once they are digesting, let's say capybara inside, they go always kind of on the shore or close to the shore, and you can get super close like this, two meters, no problem. And they spear them into the head. You know? Okay. So it's uh, it's uh, easy, and um, uh, this this case was. Uh, when they wanted to kill it and we didn't like that they are killing it so we tried to catch it and remove it okay. to 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 different to a different location okay and what they generally do then did they eat them or sometimes they eat them uh, sometimes and skin them to to have the trophy mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they just leave leave uh, leave uh, the anaconda on the shore okay so it's more like because it's like a problem for them just like know that if there is animal which I, I don't want to use the word hate I don't think it's the right name because they don't hate but they really don't like them because they are super afraid that uh, they will kill one of the kids in the village because the For kids a are, reason. yeah For because a the, reason. the kids are whole day in the water basically you know they are when when it's hot they are all all day in the water shallow water and uh, and um, I, I've 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 several cases when the Indians confirm me that their kids are missing, and uh, even they 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 have no uh, evidence. They always say it was anaconda. When the kid or adult gets lost in the water, they Because always they, say it they was really anaconda. hate them. That might, might be not right yeah, for the, for them. You you Is need it to a dangerous animal over there. It's definitely a dangerous animal. It's uh oh, look the most dangerous animals are the ones which you can't see parasites and uh, mosquitoes these are the biggest killers in the world it's not anaconda you know? because normally if you see anaconda in the wild they are like you think they are like super slow and kind of stupid and they are not moving and they are not scared of you so you you can do whatever you want. But these moments, they are not eating, you know, they are not, they are not hunting. Believe me, you don't want to see anaconda when they are hunting. It's like, Do you ever see it? Uh, I have seen uh, several times anaconda fighting with black caiman. Okay. And that, that is scary. When you see huge caiman fighting with huge anaconda, it's like atomic bombs falling into the water. <laughs> really scary. Who, like... Crazy. Like, I can't imagine how... Uh, who is the, the winner was the question. Hmm? You want to know who is the winner? Or To be honest, yes. But um, I think it depends on the size, maybe. But yeah. in general, if you have the same size or... Yeah, I would say most of the time Anaconda wins. Okay. But many times she die anyway because she got bitten. Yeah. You no, know, so then she die later. Okay. But but in general, if, they, if, they, if the Anaconda won... Or in, um, did they eat the yes, caiman? Yes, yes. Completely? Yes, they they swallowed the caiman completely. That's crazy. Crazy. Okay, okay. Um, and you need to know that the big anaconda can attack even jaguar, you know. The big male of jaguar yeah. can be over 100 kilos, you know. So try imagine how, how powerful is he. Is our cat at home, which is only a few kilos, how strong they are. 
try to mate in jaguar over 100 kilos big male and they are attacked by uh, by anacondas as well and they are killed by anacondas so the power is look uh, many times i grabbed anaconda only like three three meters four meters by the tail when they were already escaping to the water and they, uh, the anaconda had a chance to move once around the log in, uh, like tree under mm. the water and with three four guys you have no chance you have no yeah, chance to pull so it out strong. they're so strong and they're pulling centimeter by centimeter centimeter by centimeter that's the, how they kill as well you know uh, Slowly but surely. they have they have teeth <laughs> once they bite you they're not uh, poisonous but the teeth go like backwards you know so it's stuck like, like a like, fishing hook like yeah okay. like a death cage kind okay of. and then they roll over uh, the prey and um they have um uh, uh it's called uh jakobsen organ they have it in the brain so they are they are uh, they are smelling you very well you know and by by the smell uh on the tank they they kind of they are kind of measuring you who you are what you are how big you are if they can swallow you or not mm -hmm. you know and um then uh once they go around the prey they are pressing the prey they are listening the the beating of of the heart and when the prey breathe is like and in this moment like know, yeah i understand you know so the death is probably not very nice but it's like an like a to be honest like it's super smart yeah it like is super, super smart yeah but it, that's what i was telling you as well about crocodiles anacondas and crocodiles the, the, the evolution it it's killing evolution surviving and killing evolution they they all all their evolution is only f like be a better killer no and there are not many better killers than than anaconda for sure they might look dumb when you see them on the shore but when they are active whoa, whoa, whoa. no how, jokes how fast did they oh, get oh. they they hunt most of the time they go uh i have seen exactly one attack in, the, in this uh, on moment capybara and uh, most of the time they hunt in very shallow water direction to the shore okay. when animal comes to drink or go through the water uh mainly in 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 dark or close to the dark early mornings or late evenings or completely in the dark so they are with no movements in very very shallow water and they are waiting they are most of the time waiting on the path of the animals pass to the water you know the the, the frequent way where animal go, goes to drink or cross the water that's where they wait and uh once the animal put the head down or you know it's looking around very close they attack most of the t time they attack here mm. around the neck they bite around the neck they turn very fast and they start pressing the prey okay and how how often is an anaconda in amazon is uh, it like you go there two weeks and you will definitely see one no or is no it, no it's it, rare it's uh, most of the people won't see anaconda in their lifetime because it's rare or because they are like so they are undercover they are undercover okay they are undercover and you 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 need to train your eyes very well for the wildlife there it's not africa you know if you go to african safari you see wildlife everywhere yeah many people i do believe they would be quite disappointed in amazon because they would see uh they would think oh here are no animals but once they, they get trained for it you have animals everywhere and uh everything is kind of hidden in the jungle and with uh, anacondas you you need to have as well the right time for anacondas the the best time is when you have rain season or you have a lot of rain for a long time and the water gets really cold and suddenly there is one super hot day with like 30 35 degrees super hot sun and they want to warm the bodies okay. and then they go completely on the on the on the shore ah. and because uh because the 
uh, they need to go completely out, you can see them very well. And there is what, even one better moment is when you have super long uh, dry season and you don't have the water inside of the jungle. So f f suddenly you see the beaches, you know, the water goes go down and you have the jungle, you have then long beach and then you have the water. Mm. And when you get uh, some hard rain, when the water gets cold, like say three, four, five days, but the water is still not high, you have still the beaches and in that moment, when you get one more day with super hot, they go outside and you can see them super good because you have these beaches and you 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 see that huge snake rolled like uh, li like uh, like a sweet you know this mm, lemon yeah, yeah. <laughs> only the it's like massive piece of tree rolled into uh, uh, a one piece okay and like this you know the big anacondas. It's like crazy. Tree. Well, well, how big was the biggest you've ever seen? What do you think? Yes, that's 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 the thing. Uh, the one I have caught was nearly eight meters. Holding in my hands, I had many anacondas with five, six meters. Uh, but uh, I've seen minimum three times really giants. You know, I don't want to say how big because scientists uh, would say it's bullshit. But uh, I am not scared to say I've seen snakes over 13 meters. Lemon and why cakes, I know, know it was over 13 if I am going through the river with my canoe and uh, the, the stream or the small river is like 15 meters broad and I see a snake which has a tail on one side of the river and head nearly on the other side of the river. <laughs> you can imagine. It, it's not <laughs> yeah. 8 meters, you know. <laughs> But these snakes, you need to understand, they are super, super rare. Yeah, It's like with humans. We humans, we, we like to say, uh, we like to put everything in, into the boxes. Like this animal, this is the behavior, this is the length, this yeah. is the weight, this is what they do. But it doesn't work like this. Like with humans, you know, we have humans with 150 centimeters and 240 centimeters with 50 kilo and 300 kilo. With uh, and people which are super nice and su people which are super bad and killers, so all are individuals. And with anacondas and all other animals, it's the same. You have like normal population, the average population. That's wh what I believe. These are the anacondas, like se six, seven meters. Then you have this, the 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 really big ones. You have over eight meters, and then you have these giants. Like you have two meter forty people or two meter thirty people, very rare, you know. Mm. But that's the same with anacondas. You have very, very, very super small population of these giants, which are uh, hiding uh, in the in the jungle. Okay, but w the word "rare" is really interesting because what was the most rarest uh, animal you've ever seen in Amazon? Where you think maybe it was just one time, or where it was like a like pristine to see it to uh, was it an anaconda or is there something else like a jaguar or something you was taken talking about my most uh, memorable uh, like memory from the amazon is definitely with black jaguar okay and that's a super rare animal you know to see a jaguar is rare but black jaguar it's uh Actually, they have the coloration as well. If you look very close, they have these, you know, spots and mm. dots and everything. But uh, when you see it from far distance, it's black. They call it Pantera. <laughs> and uh, I was with my cameraman, George, walking through the jungle for hours in huge thunderstorm. These thunderstorms, you can imagine, it's like try to imagine the biggest thunderstorm in Europe times 1000 and <laughs> you are getting maybe somewhere in half, you know. Okay, okay. It's like thunderstorm when you have so many lightning, it's basically daylight all night long. Huge storm, huge wind, uh, rain, crazy. So the jungle is like alive in front of your eyes and you, you are having a torch, but the torch is not helping because you get so many wind and and rain that you don't see anything. So you are watching only your compass or GPS to keep the direction right, you know. 
very difficult to navigate. And we were walking, 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 walking. And suddenly behind my back, I, I, I felt and I heard like something dropped from the tree down, like, but very gently, you know, mm. but you know, when you spend so much time, you know, and I knew immediately that it's, it was a cat. And you as well then hear like, you no, know, very gentle behind. And you have these goosebumps, you know, your body gets used to these places. So you have different reaction than most of the people. So you, you, you know that there is something, something. And we were walking and the cat was, it never happened in my life. And the cat was following us. And I knew it's Jaguar, but I didn't know it was Black Jaguar. It was following us, following us, following us all the time. For curiosity, if, if this Jaguar would like to kill us, he could do it in first minute, you know, with like this, because they hunt monkeys. They know how to kill humans if they want, because they, they basically grab and they rip your stomach with the, with the claws, with, with back legs. And uh, we got into the base camp and um, uh, most of time I have base camp, I have like big plastic cover in four points. Mm. And under this, I have mosquito net, like not a, like a tent, but only made by mosquito net mm. because then you can breathe better because in the Amazon you have at night problem to breathe because the, the jungle is taking so much oxygen you know, and I don't like it. So I don't like to, to have my tent covered. Mm. So I have only the cover in the trees and under it, I have the mosquito net. So I, I got into the camp really got into the mosquito net, zipped like this, zzz, lightning, and the black jaguar was looking at me like that distance, like a meter, like this. It was incredible. It, uh, that second was really long, I can tell you. It was like this, pitch dark, lightning, and he was gone. He was gone. And in the morning, we found tracks in the camp everywhere. So that was really insane. I'm scared of, about like any man like this, because to be honest, if I hear that something drop off behind me, the first thing I would do is turn around and take a look. The first thing, <laughs> and I think it's the first thing, like everyone who's listening here would do this, but you don't. No, because you know, you, you can't change it. No, <laughs> <laughs> you can't change it. And uh, I'm not scared of, uh, jaguars of these animals. The only, the only respect what I have is anacondas. That's why we never go into the water at night. For example, you know, you need to respect the jungle. That's the law. N day is for you and night is for the jungle as well with other animals like snakes and spiders and scorpions. I mean, if you go, believe me, if you go at night with your torch in the jungle, you will piss your pants. <laughs> Most of the people would piss their pants because you put a torch on and there are ice everywhere, like millions of ice everywhere, different colors and sizes and like crazy ice everywhere. You don't see it in the daytime. Okay. This is amazing. Like this is. Okay, you're right. I, I can't imagine, and I think nobody can imagine. Yeah, people don't like to be in the Amazon jungle at night. I, I know that when when I sh tell them, go and have a look, they do like, oh, not, that, not anymore. Do you like it? Yeah, uh, I love it, but uh, I don't do it because I respect the law. Day is for me, night is for the jungle. This is great. This is... Again, like I think it's like the respect. Yeah, part. because it's uh, the 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 dangerous animals are lurking there, mm. you know. But they are not dangerous because they want to kill you. But if you're not careful enough, you might step on them and yeah. you get bitten. You know, so so of course you can get bitten in the daytime as well. But at night, uh, these animals are more active. So I I keep them there quiet and I have my my time in the daytime. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. I think um, there are so much topics about the Amazon we can talk about. Even it's about the fishing or the the the, the Indians with where you meet and live together over a half a year. But I think for the first, this is a nice framing for overall giving 
a bit of a, a, a idea what's going on over there. So I would say that we're stop on this part and go furthermore on another episode and focus a bit more on fishing and a bit more on the humans over there. But um, yeah, thank you very much for all the stuff you're telling us. Um, it's great to hear. Jungle shit happens. Before I think you'll stop.